Hi. I'm... Wait, do I say hi, I'm Steven? Hi, I'm Steven, otherwise known as Ninja. That's what I say, right, Paradox? I guess. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, and welcome to the Game Streamcast, the only podcast on YouTube that can... That, that misses, like, a month for literally no reason, and then a pandemic hits. Who are you people? I'm Paradox, and just to be clear, the pandemic hit around the beginning of our, like, qua- radio silence, but it wasn't the initial reason for the radio silence. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We just got uh, I'm, I'm Runny, also known as uh, Runbert. Thank you for being back, Runbert. I've yeah, of course. You. Anytime. And hopefully, unlike Biff, he won't have a nephew that'll run in screaming his real name. <laughs> <laughs> And hopefully, and honestly, and this time it's not a game show episode, so Runny can't sweep it. We're not forgetting. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so, what are we talking about today, boys? I, I don't want to spill the beans. Uh, well, we're gonna have to, because today we're talking about Killer Bean Forever. We're a little bit late on the topic, but hey, only by might about as well. like. Two 11 years. years, two for the remaster. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, this is a 100% real movie. <laughs> I just... did not believe it until I saw it, and I still have trouble, like, comprehending its existence. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's... Uh, where, how do you start with this? Where do you start with the discussion? Um, think John Wick, right? Think John Wick, but... If he's a I've bean, I've never watched John Wick, Bad and everybody example. else is a bean. Well, uh, we're we're referring to the general audience. Oh, okay. Right now. Well, paradox for you, think Killer Bean, but human. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure that by now most people have heard of this, if not everybody has, because it, it, it yeah. gained a lot of traction recently. Over the it, past few months, a lot of people posting videos on it. Especially because Diamond Bolt did a video about it, didn't he? Yeah, yeah Diamond Bolt did. Uh, uh, Critical did a video, yeah. I remember. That was like the huge one. Yeah. And then it kind of just spiraled off to being like it, like the perfect like thing to just get random reaction images from. And, and mm-hmm. then yeah. he just kind of <laughs> it grew. Yeah, the memes were a big part of it too. That's how, that's how I figured out about it. Yeah, kind of like yeah. the last couple episodes of Steven Universe Future. <laughs> yep. I uh, swear, I found like so many reaction stills. It's like, it's hilarious. It's um, but like Killer Bean is just, it's a trip. It's free on YouTube, so we'll put mm-hmm. a link probably in description if you want to watch it. It's also a it, link to a petition so that Killer Bean can be officially added to YouTube movies. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but basically, what Killer Bean is, is I think it's just like Fast and Furious, where it's so stupid, and it takes itself so serious, that it just becomes good. Mm-hmm. Don't let my mom hear you talk about the Fast and Furious movies like that. She loves them. <laughs> like, the thing about, I, I the thing about Killer movie. Bean, <laughs> the, I think one of the best parts about Killer Bean is the fact that it takes itself so seriously, but you can't take it seriously at all because they're all beans, and everything about it is just so ridiculous. Yeah. Speaking uh, of ridiculous, and I told Ninja I was going to do this, and there's not really any other way to show horn this in. There's only two characters in this entire film that wear actual pants. <laughs> I kid you not, the rest of the time, their legs are covered, but their lower torso is just... Exposed. They're <laughs> mean, so it's not showing anything. But it just bothers me. When I turn around, it's like, but oh wait, no, they're beans. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, yeah, that's true. But like, you just got to think about it. They're wearing belts. So like, what if it's just like <laughs> <laughs> they're wearing belts? Yes, they're just wearing chaps that happen to be the same color in one spot as their actual skin. Yes. <laughs> also, I've noticed that most of them, actually, yeah, most of them don't even seem to have like actual shirts either. Like they've got this like vest thing, and then they've got sleeves, but you can see the disconnect. 
It's kind of <laughs> weird. Yeah. Uh huh. That's so, enough yeah. of my. That's enough of me complaining about how this 3D animated movie about anthropomorphic coffee beans doesn't make sense. So, <laughs> are you sure you want to end like this fashion like rant? It's fantastic. Oh, if you want me to go on a fashion rant, I would go on a fashion rant, but that is going to be, like, an entire episode on its own. Do, do you want to spend $25 <laughs> on a um, Killer Bean shirt? <laughs> you mean a vest? But for something I am actually, um... Uh, what's the word? I was going to say it, and I can't remember it now. Hmm. I feel like such an idiot. What's the word? Qualified! Something I am qualified to talk about is the music, which is surprisingly really good for this goofy movie. Yeah, it, mm-hmm. it's like, it's weird, because it's just like, it really feels legit to me. Uh, but Paradox, you have more insight. You talk about how the notes mean something. I don't... Okay, so this isn't sideways, so I'm not going to go and give like some full like in-depth musical analysis, but... It is kind of neat that they did have like this kind of leitmotif going on, though it kind of just acted as the theme of the movie, just in different styles throughout. It was, at the beginning, this kind of like uh, electronic, I believe, kind of uh, hip-hop hybrid. Then there was um, a more kind of orchestral version uh, some other time in the movie, I don't remember exactly where all the music is, but it's it's really well made. It's surprisingly fitting for all of the scenes. Just looking at this movie, you wouldn't think it would be as well made as it is. But mm-hmm. for a movie with less than a million dollars for the budget, this has some. It has a fantastic score. So, um, good segue into the budget paradox. Um, so. If, if you guys looked at the credits at all, and Paradox said he didn't before the podcast. Ronnie, did, have you looked at the credits? I have not looked at the credits. Okay, I did see the credits. What I said was that I didn't pay attention to the end because I was doing something else because I thought it was finished and there was nothing important. Apparently, I was wrong. So, I was, there was nothing important to the storyline or anything. But well, Jeff I didn't the... think there was going to be like an end credit scene. There isn't. It's literally just the names in the credit. Jeff Lou, the director, did pretty much everything else. Like, he was, really? like... There was, like, only six people that worked on this film, and he did most of the work. What? Yeah. Dang. This was, like, his passion project. That's crazy. I'll say. And, like, he was also... Uh, I believe he worked on the um, special effects for the Matrix sequels. Not the first film, just the sequels. Oh, did he really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Huh. That explains a lot. <laughs> so like, Good he, lord. He, I mean, I'm just going to say, though, I w- if, hearing that, I would have expected a little bit better. But for the team that he had, it is still really well done. Yeah. You can definitely see a lot of the, uh, like, a lot of the Matrix uh yeah, you could definitely tell Killer Bean was inspired by the Matrix, just like all the action scenes and kind of the more basic story, but especially the action scenes, because because like the act, the action scenes, basically it's just balls off the wall. Like there's really yeah. no rules, no physics or anything to this. Uh, Killer Bean basically does whatever he wants in these action scenes. You know, like if he wants to do a triple front back flip, side flip and shoot 17 guys in the head at the same time, and then kick off one guy, and then, I don't know, judo kick another guy into a skyscraper or something, he can do it, you know? I think, Or, you know, just jump through a ceiling and then realize, oh, wait, I'm standing on glass. That hurts. <laughs> <laughs> or, like, you know, shoot a bullet with a bullet. <laughs> oh, yeah, they do that a lot. I mean, that is, I would think, theoretically possible. It's just very, very difficult. Let's get the the Mythbusters on this. Because the way the bullet works is it's just like the hammer hits the bit which ignites the gunpowder and sends the bullet Hmm. uh, out of the barrel. 
So, in theory, if you could be precise about it enough, you could shoot a bullet with a bullet and have it fire in midair. Okay, okay. Well, I'm going to issue a challenge to the Mythbusters. <laughs> Which are no longer a thing, but okay. okay Specifically well, gonna... to Fine, gonna... Adam Savage or Jamie Heineman. I'm going to go with Matthew Patrick of Film Theory now. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did, didn't he already do a video on, on uh, Killer Bean? But did he do one on... Did he? <laughs> did... Actually, I don't know. So I was going to say, if he did, I have to go searching for it. Because that would... That just okay, no, he... like the That would be perfect for Film Theory to do. Uh, yeah, never mind, he didn't. I, I don't know why I thought he did. Okay. So I am issuing a Everybody challenge. Everybody at Matthew Patrick to do this theory. <laughs> I'm issuing him a challenge. To spam to do him a on Twitter. Uh, to do the theory. Can you shoot a bullet? Can you fire a bullet while using another bullet? Like, can is that possible? I challenge Matthew Patrick to do that. Or I've, another one, which was something I found interesting, was the gold bullets. Because they uh, mentioned, yeah. and this is. Uh, n- part of the dumb logic of this world and i'll explain that in a second uh the gold bullets because gold is very malleable it's very easy to manipulate uh they said that it could expand upon being fired and cause a small entry wound and a large exit wound but notice how there's absolutely no wounds of any kind on any of the beans (laughs) so (laughs) film theory figure this out Okay, also, Speaking of the beans dying, like those ragdoll physics were taken full advantage of. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, That's I one of my favorite parts know. of the movie. Just like they get shot and it's like... <laughs> and then, the, and, then and, 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 the, and all the... Like in the final fight scene, too, like whenever one of them gets hit, they just ragdoll on the floor. <laughs> and they get right back up. <laughs> it's so, awesome. I, one of my so favorite little... One of, Oh, go ahead. One of my favorite little details of the film is the um, is how it's just like um, property of Killer Bean, just on the bullet casing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he turns it around, and just like this wasn't meant for you. Or, like, <laughs> no, I think he said the bullet was meant for someone else. Oh right, right, right. Mhm. Like, anyway, should fuck? we should we start talking about the story now? I was gonna say that and. What a story it is. Oh, yeah. yeah. No. So, um, who wants so to take So, starting the... at night in Bean Town. <laughs> Bean Town. <laughs> Bean Down in Bean Town. So, starts off with this dance party going on with like 20 beans, all in different, like, Different but similar gangster outfits. Yeah. Just dancing in this warehouse full of barrels, because why the heck not, with, like, these speakers three times their size. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, <laughs> phone rings. This one guy goes over and answers it, and he's a guy saying, hey, quiet down, I'm trying to sleep. He says, oh, you want it quiet? Turns it all the way up. Next thing you know, Killer Bean drives in. Starts Just shooting them up all over the place. Yeah, it's like a it's like a five minute action scene of Killer Bean jumping around everywhere and shooting other beans in the face. It's awesome, straight out of John Wick. Also, Whip. one of the few appearances of grenades, I believe. Oh yeah, that's mm-hmm. where he um he picks he like kicks the grenade right in the midair. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <Like the> most... <laughs> and this most... guy's like, oh no! And instead of running or trying to survive in any way, he plugs his ears. <laughs> Like, what are you doing? <laughs> He's beating it up. <laughs> Alright, so are like, we gonna... You're dead start? anyways, but try to be less dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he pretty much gave at up the at that end point. Of it, there's one guy left who was going to shoot Killer Bean, but he was stupid and looked at him, and then tried to call his uncle, who Killer Bean apparently knows and knows who he is, and then mm-hmm. kills him while the phone is still ringing. Yeah, it's it's basically like a same story as John Wick. I know you haven't seen it yet, but like the main premise of John and Wick. Intro credits. Yeah. Anyway, that yeah, intro like the main main premise of John Wick is that uh, 
is that is that some dudes wrong John Wick. So then he vows to get. So then John Wick vows to get revenge on them. But uh, but what one one of the kids who uh who hurts him is actually the actually the is the son or the nephew of like a higher up mafia boss. Hmm. I don't I don't I think it's. I, anyway, it doesn't matter. But anyway, uh, so this mafia boss is the main villain, and he's trying to stop John Wick from killing his son. And like this, the story's pretty similar because the mafia boss in Killer Bean is basically getting re- trying to get revenge on Killer Bean for killing his nephew. So like, yeah, it's like yeah, the whole story is Killer Bean's an assassin who's killing a bunch of people, and so yeah, pretty much the same story as John Wick with Matrix, uh, Matrix like action scenes. And that's but the gist of it. The best scene of the whole film, I gotta say, is whenever, um, what is it, Cappuccino? Whenever he's introduced... Yes, by the way, that's the gangster <laughs> in this movie, Cappuccino. <laughs> <laughs> when he's introduced, he's just like, he's giving a meeting saying, like, our weapons are selling, but our drugs aren't selling, and, and like, what's the third thing? It's like something simple like bananas or... Eggs. Eggs, Eggs. yes! <laughs> Eggs just like... Eggs are just, like, out of control going up and down. But and so, gun weapons are up, but narcotics are down. And it's like, <laughs> you're the narcotics department. Let's do some R&D. What can we do to make people buy more drugs? And they're, like, two of them are wasted and <laughs> let us know. One of them is playing on a Game Boy. Or maybe a Game Bean, I have no it's idea. It's a Game Boy Advance, GBA. I, I know that model. I was uh, making but a is joke. It, is it called a Game Boy? It. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was calling it the Game Bean. And you the Game Bean Advance. It. It's the Game Bean Advance, then. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> but yeah, I... Wait, no, go ahead. And then there's and, another and Bean like, who's asleep. And, like, yeah. the best part about that whole scene is he gets a baseball bat that was just hanging under the TV and starts <laughs> <laughs> kicking him out the window. And yeah. My favorite joke in the whole film is just about, um, what is it? Uh, a penchant. <laughs> and it's just like, I'll ask him about it. Then he's like, okay, my social security number is one, <laughs> two. <laughs> and, like, he still says it as he's fallen. <laughs> Oh, oh I man! Said, I like financial I department or something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He and literally then, this this guy named Vagan comes in, who you see previously talking to the sheriff, mm-hmm. not sheriff, mm-hmm. detective. What the heck was the detective's name? I forget the detective's name. Uh, uh it's Bean. Wait, was it really just Bean? Yeah, it's um. It's Wait, did you say Cromwell. religious bean? Oh, Cromwell. Detective Cromwell. It's Cromwell. Anyways, he spoke to Detective Cromwell, uh, who's been looking for Cappuccino for apparently a very long time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, while they're talking, the Bean Boy Advance guy wakes up the other bean who is asleep and goes and says how that guy is doing well with the weapons department and that he must be doing something illegal. Yeah, Ironically, the narcotics department is saying, huh, hey, that guy's doing something illegal because he's doing <laughs> well with weapons. Like, what? Another <laughs> example of this dumb kind of like meta thing is uh, later on, uh, when there's this warehouse and there's these four beans sitting around a table just drinking beer, and they like go on something about like gun violence and gun control, and about how they're for gun control but they don't want their guns taken away, and it's like, <laughs> okay, yeah, <laughs> dude, the the writing in this film was unironically great. I know. Honestly, it's like. Like everything is so ironic, and all the all the henchmen are so stupid, and it's so it's so cheesy. But it knows that it's cheesy, so it just goes all out with it. It's not what I expected, but it'll mm-hmm. do. Yeah, it's like a, it, it, it's basically like the those cliche early two thousands action action movies back when the Matrix was super popular, and had a lot of influence on in the movie industry, and it 
like it, it basically takes that concept and it just goes all out with it. It's That's like, one of the best parts of the movie. It's just amazing. Mm-hmm. And um, but, let's see. Randomly, I don't remember when this is, but they they introduce the um, crap. I don't remember. I, I don't want to say Chinese bean, but like uh, oh, I think crap, it was Jade. It? Was it Jade Bean? Jet oh, Bean. Yeah. Him? It's Jet, Jet Bean. bean. Jet Bean. Uh, they introduced Jet him at a Chinese restaurant. Like, <laughs> He's just, just eating a bowl of tofu. Which are made from soybeans. Can, oh well, my no, god! Because he's a coffee bean, I think. Unless he is a soybean. In which he probably is a soybean because uh, he's from China. Or Japan or whatever. Well, that's a little racist. <laughs> like, he's gotta be a soybean. Gotta be no, it. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. <laughs> I mean, the, the whole concept of his character is kind of racist because he's he, he's like a typical Chinese uh, kung fu warrior. No, character. the most racist thing about the character is how the cop uh, interacts with him oh! before he starts kicking yes. all their butts. <laughs> Let me put this in a language you'll understand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I love Just, that scene. Uh, making fun of him like he's a Chinese delivery guy and <laughs> then he kicks him in the face. <laughs> it's like yeah. instant karma. Then eventually, um, uh, uh, every, th- all the, the, like, a bunch of fights happen and everything, and then Killer Bean's, like, talking to Vagan, because the FBI got- Vagan. Vagan. Because, <laughs> what was it, a military service got involved that was hired by Vagan. Yeah. Uh, that mercenaries. Th- mercenaries. Mercen- and what was it, they had 11, pr- 11 Purple Hearts, right? I, th- I think it was 10 or 11. And the whole, like that. He's like given this whole like heartfelt and like what's the word? Just Prepared. like this big speech about how well trained they are and how he handpicked them and they're the best of the best of mercenaries, mind you. Mm-hmm. And then he's like Oh, sorry, I just kinda spaced out there. And he's like <laughs> What the f- <laughs> Oh my god, it's amazing. And so then Killer Bean just Beats all of them, and keep in mind they have a tank. Do <laughs> they even use the tank? Now that I think of it, I think they, they just kind of the stood there and shot at him <laughs> while he was jumping in the air, just like jumping over them and shooting back. And none of their bullets hit, but he kills no. ha- like half of them in that. Like, yeah. So then, it turns out that Vegan was the one who hired them. <gasps> or, or, no, or was it Cappuccino? I don't know. The politics in this film is t- are too in depth. <laughs> no, they were they were hired by Vegan. Okay, but um, after that, there was a whole thing where uh, what happened? He got knocked out. Killer B yeah. got knocked out. Yeah, he got knocked out. He gets tied up. He escapes from getting tied up because he's Killer Bean, and then. Oh, right. uh, yeah, he kills everybody who he ties up, and uh, should we should we say spoilers? Okay, spoilers to the head. If you haven't seen the movie, but I mean, after not we've much gone and explained like over 20... half the movie, spoilers by the way, guys. Okay, no, like, no, no, no. This is this is where, this is where the big twist comes in, though. So so like this is the spoiler. Ultra spoiler alert. Major yeah, yeah, spoilers. Yeah. All right, okay, good. Snake yeah. kills Dumbledore. <laughs> 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 oh, but yeah, oh, wait, it turns out franchise. that. <laughs> turns out the, this organization that Killer Bean's been working for the whole film, they've been telling him what to do. It turns out they're corrupt. And so Vagan used to work for this corporation, but he got out once he realized it. And so he's like, look, he's like, he's like, look, Killer Bean, uh, this organization, they're not good. They're going to kill you. You need to get out of here. So then Killer Bean's like, whatever, man, I don't believe you. But then, like, Vagan starts making sense. And Killer Bean's like, hey, wait a minute, man. I believe you, and I don't like it. <laughs> And so then, and so anyway, uh, Cappuccino comes in, and he's like, he's like, hey, Vegan, you're fired. And so then, yeah, anyway, Vegan shoots him. Yeah, big spoilers. <laughs> but you're <laughs> now. one of the best comedic moment, <laughs> moments of the movie. He's yeah, like, that. Oh, and Vegan, you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't even look away from Killer Bean or anything. <laughs> shoots the guy. So then anyway, so anyway, Killer Bean shoots Vegan. Uh, he gets captured, sent to prison. 
to escape to escape from the big organization because now they're after him. So then they send uh, Jet Bean after him, and so like, oh, by the Jet, way, Jet this, Bean, this like former government corporation or whatever, these operatives are called Shadow Beans. Shadow Beans. Yeah, the Shadow Beans. So like throughout the whole time that like the showdown between Killer Bean and Bagum's going on, Detective Cromwell is just watching on the rooftop, being like, "Kill him." <laughs> yeah, so he he's just hoping that they both kill each other pretty much, so that yeah. he doesn't have to he doesn't have to keep doing his job. Because Cromwell but, can't kill them legally, and bean politics are real. Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. are very real. But anyway, uh, then so then after this whole scene, uh, Killer Bean turns into John Wick Chapter Three when he's basically on the run from the whole from the whole organization who's who's trying to kill him. So it basically is a story of John Wick. But uh, and, anyway, and uh, Jet Queen Bean. Wick. But yeah, anyway, Jet Bean finds him in a prison, and somehow Jet Bean has like superhuman strength because he manages to rip open prison bars and throw them away so he can get into the prison cell <laughs> where Killer Bean is. And so then they have this big. F- this is this fight is honestly like fantastic, yeah. like you know, like the, the like the choreography. And the way that they just get, they, they throw each other into walls. And every every time one of them gets hit, they ragdoll everywhere. It, it's fantastic. If you haven't seen this scene yet, then, like, you don't even have to watch the whole movie. Just watch this one scene. No, just watch the action the scenes of Killer Bean. Is, um, in general. Jet's, like, how he's Wonder Woman with the bracelets. Like the- <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, like, Jet Li is apparently, like, I, I guess all the Shadow Beans are superhuman because Killer Bean can dodge bullets and shoot bullets in midair, and then mm-hmm. uh, Jet Li is fast enough to block bullets and rip off prison bars. Yeah. So, yeah, Something anyway, up. yeah, so they fight, Killer Bean, Killer Bean wins, and then he runs off into the sunset for the sequel, hopefully. Yep. Uh, isn't it a um, ten-part series, right? All right, there is supposed to be a, a series following afterwards, which... Is supposed to release this year, but oh really? I, it said in twenty twenty. Mm-hmm. Oh heck yeah! Hopefully, yeah. But Fast and Furious Nine was supposed to re- release this year too. Well, there are a lot of movies that are supposed to release this year, but probably, uh, well, I don't know if they'll be delayed because of the whole like people not being able to actually go to the movies thing. Yeah. Yeah. Because you can't release, you be. can't make money from an empty box office. That's true. Yeah. Well, I yeah. tried that once, but. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, are we going to talk about the action scenes now, like more in depth? Um, Killer Bean. They're at, they're, you just gotta watch them, in all honesty. Like. Yeah. If we if we tell you them, you won't believe them. Or, <laughs> or we won't do them justice. Yeah. Like, the, the way I describe them is like I've been describing this whole time. So, like, think The Matrix and John Wick meshed into one. And you've got Killer Bean. Just, just think of, like, a teenage boy just, like, making, like, a, a movie and then remove the sex from it and you got yourself Killer Bean. <laughs> Honestly, that's a but, pretty good know, way to describe throw it. In, throw in a toilet joke. Because oh. that was in this movie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's a scene oh, where yeah, what was else, There's a scene that we didn't mention where, like, uh, Killer Bean almost gets killed by Vagan at this warehouse across from a bar. He goes to the bar. Cromwell comes to the warehouse believing that Killer Bean will be there. Finds he isn't, but then looks across the street and, oh, look, there's his car. And look, <laughs> through the window, there's Killer Bean. Plot <laughs> convenience. And no so he goes in, the in. They almost shoot each other. The bartender comes out with a shotgun and makes the uh, detective leave. <laughs> then Killer Bean's like, I'm going to go use the restroom while the guy's still shooting at him. No, going to shoot at him. He gives the guy like a fat stack of money for like two shots of tequila. <laughs> <laughs> and like the one shot that the detective had when yeah. he's walking out of the bathroom uh, he says something about it being a double flusher or two flusher <laughs> and the bartenders were like but you only flushed once <laughs> they like made it the most <laughs> epic thing ever 
<sighs> and then Killer Bean's just like, yeah! <laughs> <So he laughs> rides off the into the sunset. The bartender's like, oh, I gotta call the plumber. <laughs> hey, Mario. <laughs> Mario! <laughs> hey, Mario. You won't believe what this Abina did to my toilet. <laughs> Killer Bean came back. And he killed the, the, the toilet. In all honesty, <laughs> I think I, I think that that bartender was the was the only person who could have beaten Killer Bean in the entire movie. <laughs> yeah, probably the one per the one Bean Killer Bean backed down from. That was for like real. The bartender, the, the shotgun wielding bartender. <laughs> the bartender not killing Killer Bean is like um whenever Star Lord just hit Thanos in the face. And then Finn War. <laughs> <laughs> it's like so close. Yet so far. <laughs> oh, God. It really could have yeah. killed Killer Bean, though, because there's, because like, because like, I mean, Killer Bean can dodge a single bullet or he can shoot bullets out of the air, but when it's a shotgun, there's, I don't think there's anything he can do at point blank. There's a, pr- there's a pretty good spread dep- depending on the type of shotgun and like the shot he was using. Yeah. Well, gun expert paradox. <laughs> No, I think I'm an expert. I'd go and ramble about 15 minutes about the specifics, but I just know from like hunting with my dad. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Alrighty. Well, um, is there anything else we want to touch on? Uh, it's it's definitely worth your time. It's only about uh, what 70 minutes it's like long. Eight, it's 84 minutes. 84, 84, minutes. Yeah, 84, 84 minutes. 84 minutes and some odd seconds. That's yeah. free on YouTube. Yeah, absolutely. And, and then there's like, merch if you want it, which goes towards supporting the upcoming series. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah, On honestly. Etsy, but yeah, I mean, like seriously, if you haven't watched already, we're not doing this movie justice by describing it. It's just yeah. one of the movies you have to go and see. And like, come on, you can knock it out in an afternoon. Like the pacing is super fast. I see engaged. Did. There's like it's just action scene after after action scene, pretty much. Alrighty, so, so um, uh, what rating would you guys give this movie? Okay, ironically, I give this movie a perfect ten out of ten. But as, but like, like as a film on its own, uh, I think it's like a six, maybe seven out of ten. I say probably six. We've talked a lot about what's good about this movie, made fun of some stuff. But yeah. at the end of the day, like, it was made by six people, and as fantastic as it looks and is from that, there is some obvious uh, flaws to it. Like, the yeah. look of the uh, 3D animation is a little odd. The ragdoll, mm-hmm. which is used constantly in action That's scenes. the best part of the movie, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'll I, agree to disagree. I can... I can now start officially using this phrase, so I'm going to start using the fuck out of it. As <laughs> an independent filmmaker, <laughs> I I respect the grind of only six people on a team, and I really yeah. do think what they did with that six people was really great. And, and as also- one of the people that had a hand in your film, and did not have the luxury most composers have of having the film to go off of to compose to. Uh-huh. Oh. Oh. Ninja, what? what uh, just kind of putting that out reading? there. Anyways, uh, 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 what's your sh- score for this movie, Ninja? Uh, my, so, my score, on, in all honesty, I do kind of think that, like, if you're in the mood for a stupid, fun movie, it's the perfect movie. But yeah. I'm, I would argue Megamind, but that's just my opinion. Megamind's just a good movie. Yeah. Don't For don't sure. you dare insult Mega Mind in this household. <laughs> but uh, it's one of my it's like one of my favorite movies. But and I will say that even to this day, it's still like it's a stupid funny movie. It's a good movie, but it's a stupid funny movie. Okay, okay. So Killer Bean, in my humble opinion, is a solid like six and a half, seven, because it's just like I mean that snare roll. The, the story just isn't that compelling and, and like in all seriousness there's like it's not like as narratively compelling as John Wick but the action yeah. I think is a lot more enjoyable because of how stupid it is yeah 
Um, other than that, uh, is this the end of the podcast? I would say so. Okay, yep. I'm Ninja. Who were all you? Wait, no, I'm Steven, otherwise known as Ninja. <laughs> Who were all nice. you people? <laughs> I'm Ronnie. I'm Paradox. <laughs> okay, well, I guess that's... What is it? Oh, the end... <laughs> Oh That's the end gosh. of the podcast. Check uh, out Ninja on Twitter at X9 X, X9 Ninja55 five, XJ9 five, X Ninja555 five, 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 or X underscore Ninja555, five, 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 whatever it is. Check me out. <laughs> uh, Paradox underscore. No, at Paradox MM underscore. Also, I've got a new album coming out. Look to the sky. First track's out right now called The Moment to Breathe. Yeah, go okay. check him out. Runny, do you have anything to plug? Add Runny on Not Discord. Really. It's Runny. Yeah. <laughs> hashtag 3943. Yeah, if you want to add me, go, go ahead. I don't care. Man. And just spam his DMs with bears. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. I stole your joke. No. <laughs> okay. Um, make sure We're so you good at outros. Subscribe to the GameSphere cast. Uh, follow us on Twitter at GameSphereCast to Fickle. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, do it twice. Wait, no, if you do it three times. Subscribe, unsubscribe, and then resubscribe because it's exactly. just that. Exactly. Exactly. We're trying to get to And as always, okay. stay spherical. Ah!